cold, it's raining, and it's the perfect time to talk about crash landing on you. Hello beautiful people, it's me your local diva Anurag and you are watching the Anurag show. And today I will be talking about the 2019 K-drama Crash Landing on You. So I'm in my kitchen right now, I hope you don't mind, please ignore the background, it's really messy. Um, but whatever. So what really drew me first into this drama was like the, like you know, I read what it was about and I was immediately like you know, interested. So basically the premise of this drama is that this really wealthy uh, South Korean woman, you know, she she goes for like paragliding because that's what rich people do on Mondays, I guess. So, you know, she goes paragliding in the air and she's looking down on people and, you know, she's just having her moment, you know, with the wind blowing on her face and everything. And then suddenly this CGI tornado comes and just sweeps her away and she loses her consciousness and blah, blah, blah. And when she wakes up, she realizes that she is on the other side of the border, which means she is in North Korea. <laughs> yes, um, I don't know if I should even say that name, <laughs> name of the country because I feel like something is going to happen if uh, I say that name out loud. But yeah, so she is on enemy territory. Yeah, and she's scared and blah, blah, blah. And then she meets this North Korean daddy. I mean, North Korean army captain, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she convinces him to help her get back home and everything. and. Yeah, so I just thought it was so interesting to see, you know, this South Korea and North Korea and, you know, all that dynamic. So what did I think about the drama? Okay, I will tell you that, but first let's get into the characters. So first and foremost, the female lead, you know, the heroine Yoon Seri, her name is, yeah. So she is an interesting character, I must say. She has this really rich did i say rich wealthy woman and she is like really strong but there were times when she just acted so dumb i was like girl what what you are in danger you are in enemy territory what what are you doing but you know i mean i mean most k-drama heroines are like that but but you know like she is supposed to be this wealthy woman who does not really know many things about like poor people i guess so i mean it makes sense that she's a little bit dumb about the other people's way of life and everything and i think uh, though, like she was kind of made dumb in the beginning so that they could develop her character later because she's this wealthy woman and you know everything this arrogant wealthy woman but then i guess you know later she you know when she goes to north korea and experiences the hardships and the life or whatever she becomes a better person. Like. So I felt like she was an okay character. Not the best K-drama heroine, but you know, she does her part. The actress uh, did a good job, I guess. I mean, she was over the top sometimes, you know, just overacting, but but she's fine. Now let's talk, let's talk about the male lead, uh, Ri Jung-hyuk, I think his name is, yeah, the captain, the North Korean captain who rescues her and, you know, tries to help her or whatever. So he is, he is, I mean, K-drama hero, strict, handsome, stern, determined, uh, manly, he's all that, I mean, there's nothing new, actually. There were moments when he was like really childish, like childish in the sense that his expressions were very childlike, very egg you know, like, mm, like, I mean, like an army captain doing those sort of expressions, I mean, uh, I don't know, you know. But there were moments like that, uh, be I guess because he was a virgin or whatever, and she was his first love or something like that, you know. I mean, it it's fine. He's, you know, he did his part well, the actor did his part well. I mean, the hero and heroine are someone the that you can ship, you know, it's it's really nice. I mean, what what else can I say? They, they are not the best, but they're not bad either. They are good. They are okay. And uh, there were other soldiers, uh, you know, in the North Korean side, the who who work under the captain, the male lead, and they also kind of help the woman, the hero heroine, and they just they were just there for comic relief. I mean, they they are supposed to be soldiers, right? They are in the North Korean army. They are supposed to be the strong, strict soldiers or whatever. But they are so incompetent, like. They can't even do anything right. They are just 
always I mean they're just there for comic relief they're just there to make you laugh and I'm just like why why is it necessary I mean they can be both funny and competent you know but they're just very inefficient and like they could not even manage to catch that one ordinary weak South Korean woman what is going on and I just feel like sometimes they don't take threats very seriously like all these characters the heroine and these soldiers I mean your lives are in danger what are you doing you're here making jokes and like and it's not really their fault it's like the writer or the director's fault for making a very serious situation seem funny you know seem it just like takes away the threat level you know the danger the atmosphere completely changes so I mean it was just very weird but uh, th these are just some moments you know and later they do turn out to be competent but in like very at the end you know at the very end and uh, some of the characters the supporting characters were also really nice especially the there there are this group of women in North Korea in a village in North Korea and who are just very nosy very you know all those aunties that you see gossiping and just <laughs> doing all those very annoying aunties I mean at first I was so annoyed by them but then later I actually grew to like them and they do have their redeeming qualities I mean they their characters also develop really well even though they're just like minor supporting characters but I think they did a fantastic job and by the end I was like rooting for them I was supporting them I, I really liked them by the end so that was very surprising and uh, <laughs> there are there's this there's another couple let's say who are called uh, Gusong Jun and Seodan and I won't say much about them I'll just say that they deserved better that's it they deserved better Yoon Seri the main heroine's father I feel like I've seen him somewhere but I just can't remember where anyway I just wanted to say that I wish he had more screen time because there were some many moments where he he didn't have any lines like other characters were like talking and blah blah blah, blah and he was just sitting there like I mean give the poor man some lines <sighs> The main villain of this K okay drama was, I think he he was very good. The actor who portrayed him did it very very well. He you know posed a real threat. He was a real danger to all the characters, and I thought he was a fantastic villain throughout. But you know what's interesting about this drama is that they they purposely, intentionally point out the cliches of K drama and at the same time use it. It is kind of like parody, but I don't know, but not exactly like. They are very self-aware, I must say, that they are very self-aware of uh, what they are doing. Like, they know what they are using is cliché, they know you are using cliché tropes, they are doing the usual cliché things that hero and heroine does, hero and heroine does in dramas. But at the same time, you know, they are, they are using it. They are pointing it out, but at the same time, they are using it. So, it's a very self-aware drama and I think that's kind of smart of them. But, uh, I don't know, I, it, just, it was just something that I found really interesting. So they had great soundtrack, great uh, cinematography, <laughs> cinematography, uh, especially of Switzerland. I mean, yeah, you will see, you will see sceneries of Switzerland, and they are beautiful. But to be honest, I mean, if I were in Switzerland and I had like this Nokia phone, uh, yeah, the video would turn out great anyway because, you know, Switzerland is just so very beautiful. There is this cameo in this drama that just shook me. I don't know if I should be saying that, but anyway, so there's. So there's this really old film, it's not really old, but it came out a long time ago and a character from that film shows up in this drama. I was like, what, 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 what? If you haven't watched the film, you won't, you won't get it, I guess. But yeah, I, was, I mean, I watched the film, so I was like really surprised when I saw that. I was like, what is he doing here? Anyway, so the ending, you know, I, I thought it could have been better. It, it was good, you know, I have nothing against it, but I just felt I won't say the ending was bad or anything. It was good, but I just wished that for the finale, you know, there would be something grand. Uh, it would end with a bang. There, there would be some sort of grand closing scene or something. But yeah, the, I just felt the ending was very, I don't know, kind of rushed. Not only rushed, but it just wasn't done very well. It could have been better. It had the potential to be better. Overall, crash landing on you. I actually liked it it had its flaws but it's still a very very entertaining watch uh 
Like, you know, especially like since it's a forbidden love story between a South Korean woman and a North Korean man and you know, all that thing is just very so interesting to watch how they navigate that and there's also a lot of like politics and you know, all these government thingies thrown in, you know, and which makes it really interesting. It's not only a love story, but it's also like this, you know, dynamic between the two countries. And what really was interesting is that they did not show North Korea in a bad light. Like North Korea was not, you know, shown negatively. And, uh, they just portrayed it like any other country where there are good people and there are bad people. And yes, there were some rules and uh, regulations that were different, uh, some restrictions, but still at the end, like, you know, the people there are just ordinary people and they're living their life. There are good people, there are bad people. So I really found it interesting that the makers of this drama did not really portray North Korea as the bad person in this whole drama. <sighs> I guess that's it. Uh, so that was my review of Crash Landing on You. If you haven't watched it, do so. And if you have, uh, comment down below what you thought of it. What were your favorite moments or, you know, what, what's your favorite song from the soundtrack or something and i guess that's it for this video if you liked it please like comment share and subscribe and recommend me some good k dramas to watch and maybe i'll review them so that's it thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time bye and yes stay safe in quarantine okay